Harley-Davidson just released their 2022 fiscal year end report, and they are making the most profit per unit that we have seen in almost a decade. I'll give you that exact number in a minute, but I find myself wondering if this increase in profitability per unit is such a great thing, or instead, could this be the beginning of the end for Harley-Davidson? Let's talk about the facts, and I want to know if you think this is a good thing or a bad thing for the most iconic motorcycle brand in American history. Jochen Zeitz was announced the new CEO of Harley-Davidson in May of 2020. Now, stock prices were hovering around $20 a share when he was announced as CEO. After year-end 2022 reports came out, stocks climbed as high as $50 a share. In 2020, an Iron 1200 Sportster would have cost you right at $10,000. If you had taken that $10,000 and then invested it when Jochen Zeitz became CEO, today it would be nearly $25,000. Now this sounds like Harley Davidson's making a comeback, right? If you look at this single metric only. Let's take a look at some of the other stuff that goes into this story. Since we're already talking about stock prices, let's discuss what are making the investors so happy. If we look at the 2022 year-end results for the three pillars of Harley-Davidson, you'll see the first positive results. The Harley-Davidson Motor Company and the Harley-Davidson Financial Services pillars combined generated almost $1 billion. But after recording the loss from the live wire business segment, Harley is still reporting just over $740 million in net income. This video is brought to you by Brunt, the brand that is transforming workwear. I've been very cautious about the brands that I work with here on the channel. When Brunt reached out, I said I would have to test the product for a few months before I would consider working with them. And they said, no problem. That's how confident they are that you will love their product. And I have to say, after weeks of wearing these boots every day, they are the most comfortable work boot I have worn in years. If their boots don't perform to your standards, return your purchase within 30 days for a full refund. They sell high quality work boots and work apparel designed for real workers, built with the best materials and technology. And I wanna thank Brunt for sponsoring today's video. Get $10 off today on your first purchase with a 30-day risk-free trial by going to bruntworkwear.com slash Ozarks10. That's bruntworkwear.com slash Ozarks10 and use the discount code Ozarks10, link in the description down below. I found it interesting to see Livewire presented in this business update as its own business segment. That's not something they have done in the past. When Harley-Davidson spun Livewire off through a Spark merger, it was reported they still held about 75% of the equity in Livewire. But a month after that merger, investors pulled out, reportedly because projections fell short. And that left Harley-Davidson to invest more capital into Livewire to keep it operating. It is reported that now Harley-Davidson has about 90% equity in Livewire. While we're talking about Livewire, I found it very interesting that in 2022, they sold just over 600 units. That number is up from 461 units in 2021, but in the fourth quarter, they only sold 69 units. I understand why many people, including the CEO of Harley-Davidson, think electric vehicles are the future. And I'm not disputing that. But personally, I believe the adoption rates that are being predicted are not sustainable. But that's a topic for another video. Retail sales slipped 12% in the U.S. and are down 8% worldwide for 2022. And according to the Q4 2022 inventory levels, there are more bikes on the floors in the dealerships now than there have ever been since Jochen Zeitz took over as CEO of Harley-Davidson back in 2020. This might account why some dealers are advertising free stage one upgrades now on touring models. That's not something we've been seeing a lot of for the last couple years. Right now, you should be asking yourself, how did Harley-Davidson increase revenue by 8% if worldwide sales is down 8% at the same time? Pricing was responsible for almost a 6% increase in income. This next slide here really explains it best. In 2022, Harley-Davidson made $3,500 profit per unit. Yes, $3,500 profit per unit. The most we've seen since 2014. Now I want to remind you again, this is HDMC profit. This does not count live wire or the financial services pillars of the business. And it's important to remember, 
You are not Harley Davidson's customer. The dealership is. The dealership still has to make money on top of that. So what you're paying has to include profit for the dealership as well as this $3,500. The question I find asking myself is in 2014, did everyone complain about the price of the Harley Davidsons as much as they're doing currently? I started shopping for a Street Glide Special in 2015 and I can tell you I was not going to pay MSRP. No way. I wanted a deal and I found one after the 2016 models were released and the 2015s went on sale. I ended up actually getting a 2016 but that's a whole nother story. I'll tell you another time maybe. MSRP was $23,200 back then on my Street Glide Special. Today is $28,000 and I did the math and that's about a 3% increase year after year. Now the average cost of living increase has been just at or under 2% till 2021 when it skyrocketed to 7% thanks to inflation. So the price increase for this model has not been enormously out of line with inflation since 2015. The problem though is necessities like bread, eggs, gas. They're all going up dramatically in price. This leaves less disposable income for potential motorcycle buyers. Factor in that Harley Davidson has already reduced models since 2019 by about 30%, including all of the more affordable models. The question in my mind is will this drive sales even lower? I'm glad to see Harley Davidson keeping prices in line with inflation and making a profit at the same time. I love Harley Davidson motorcycles and I want that iconic company to be strong financially and be around for another 120 years. But I don't want to see them become a boutique brand. That's what many customers are afraid is going to happen to Harley Davidson if sales continue to decline and prices continue to increase. It will be a bike that only the wealthy can afford. Some of you will say the answer is simple and it's obvious. Harley Davidson could simply lower the price by one or two thousand dollars per unit. But let's be honest, do you think simply cutting fifteen hundred dollars from the price of a Street Glide Special will dramatically increase sales throughout the year? Personally, I don't. I think they would have to cut more than three thousand dollars off of the price to have any meaningful impact on sales numbers. And the fact is, then there would be no profit left. Others will say they should produce a loss leader an entry level motorcycle. And yes, this will cut down the profit per unit average, but it will increase sales in other things like parts and accessories and service, and it will bring more riders into the Harley Davidson family. The problem is the boss. And I don't mean the CEO, I mean the shareholders. Do you know who are the main shareholders? Well, would you be surprised to know? 37% of the shares of Harley Davidson are owned by five institutions, you know, Five, just five individual institutions own 37% of Harley Davidson. And those guys have names like the Vanguard Group, H Partners, and BlackRock. With profits per unit up and net income up $91 million from last year, I don't think they're gonna push the CEO to change directions or strategies. Do you remember Matt, the last CEO? He was replaced at the beginning of 2020 after seeing this chart we can see that price per unit had continued to decrease year after year while he was CEO from 2015 to 2020. If you're an investor, you're going to look at this report and you're going to say Harley Davidson is on the rise. Look how profitable they're becoming again. But if you're a consumer and with inflation on the rise and people having less disposable income, you may decide it makes more sense to become an investor than a consumer at this time for Harley Davidson. I know with inflation on the rise and the way the economy is right now, my income's not keeping up with inflation. So there's no new Harley Davidson bike in my future at the moment. But the more and more I look at it, the more I'm interested in just restoring my old Evo powered Harley Davidson Dyna. If you guys dig the content, please give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. Y'all stay safe and keep on riding.